In the last video, I showed the original single field audit log solution in FileMaker 7.0, but it was published in version 3.0 and converted with no modifications because I can't run FileMaker 3.0. But I wanted to show it to you. Now the file you're looking at right now was published in version 7.0 and shows the evolution of the technique to a true single field logging solution. Let's take a look at it. We'll demonstrate it. I'll just put the letter F in here. And you can see it goes ahead and puts in the text here. Now the first thing you're going to notice is it doesn't include the old text. I decided to drop that technique because it added on a lot of overhead and I didn't really think it was that important because you can simply look at the last time it was changed what it was before. It's right there. Let's take a look at this solution. We'll go into Manage Database. There's the log file. There's nothing else to it. It's just this field doing all the work here. And the key here is that it's a calculated value and this option for do not replace has been unchecked. That means it can overwrite itself each time it needs to update. And the first thing you want to notice is that it includes a reference to itself. Now we could use a cell function, but you know FileMaker 7 was new and we didn't really you know understand it that well, and so uh, we didn't use a cell function here. But you get an idea. First thing we do is we check to see if any of these fields, these are the fields that get included in the solution, if the get active field name is inside this string here. So you just have to list all your fields here: a text, which is right there, and number, and this determines what fields you're going to be able to track. Then it determines if that's true to put a dash in, to put the current date in, the current time. You could use a timestamp, account name, active field name. And then we check to see if the active field name equals a text. If it does, put in a dot text. All these things were required to make it work. And it was an evolution. It wasn't perfect. Don't get me wrong. We probably could have made this better. But this is the evolution of how it happened. And then we put in the log here. And we do a little test here to make sure that the log isn't empty. Um, you know, then don't put that extra return in there. Pretty common thing to do. So there we go. We've got the solution here. Now you can see that this is the true portion of the case statement, and this is the false. And you can see the little comment here. In case you modify the log field, the default prevents the contents from being removed. Otherwise, it would put in this blank line and remove it, and it wouldn't be good. So it's a pretty straightforward thing. If you understood the last technique, this makes a lot of sense. Now what we're going to do in the next video is actually show you and produce this from scratch so you have a better understanding of it. I wanted to give you an overview of it. We're going to produce a, a modern version of this and show you how it's done so you can really grab onto it. This is just kind of a, an appetizer to get you warmed up so you understand the basic idea behind everything.